How's it going, Pokemon? JD here, bringing you guys today's upload, which is going to be an NU match against my good buddy Blake or Sue Project. Now, if you haven't heard my voice before on this channel, that's because this is actually only my second upload ever here. And on the first one, you guys left me enough love down in the comments and in the ratings that I've been made a director here, so I can kind of upload here whenever I want and expect to see a lot more of me and whatnot here on this channel. But we got an NU match to get to, so I'm going to lead off with my Matang, which is definitely what I lead off most of the time on this team because I got the stealth rocks and I love getting those up early game and I also have the bullet punch priority because every team does need that priority but I see this stun fisk and I'm thinking it definitely is going to have the earth power so I got to switch out into my Reggie Ice who can take a special hit well and that thunderbolt does a suspicious amount and I don't see any life orb recoil or anything so I'm definitely thinking he's specs at this point so I'm going to put that in the back of my mind as I go for the ice beam I'm actually running an offensive variant of Reggie Ice which kind of catches people off guard but that Ice Beam still doesn't do enough to the point where I'm going to stay in because it won't be a 2-hit KO and I cannot be taking fighting type moves with my Reggie Ice anytime soon. So I'm going to Matang, get Circle Throat out into my Torterra. Now my Torterra, I just decide to stay in and go for the Earthquake, kind of to scout out what he's going to do. I don't believe he has anything immune to the Earthquake, so it's pretty safe in going for it. It does a nice chunklet to this throw here, but he goes for the bulk up. Now I'm definitely fearing the fact that he might actually be a rest set because when you see bulk up, and uh, throw, you tend to think it's going to carry the rest. So I'm going to go for the Leech Seed just to try and get some residual damage going on him and some recovery for me. As he goes for the Brick Break, now I see that he's carrying Brick Break, Circle Throw, and Bulk Up, and I'm thinking, well, he has to have Payback in that last slot unless he wants to be walled to death by Haunter. So he's probably not the rest set, which is definitely good for me because I'm going to be able to take this thing out here by keep going for Earthquakes and stuff like that because he doesn't have any form of recovery besides the leftovers and that's negated by Leech Seed. So I'm just going to go for the Earthquake as he actually goes into Torkoal, probably thinking I would switch or something seeing as he had the um, Leech Seed on him and I couldn't do much after the bulk up, but that's not what I do, I just go for straight for the Earthquake. And I actually get a crit, which is unfortunate because he would have been able to Lava Plume or get up his rocks or whatever he wanted to do. But I'm going to take him out with two Earthquakes there and get rid of the Torkoal, which is good because that physical wall is out of the way early. So he goes into Leafeon, and now this thing is a huge threat to my team. I look at my team and I'm like, I have nothing that can handle this. And I know he's probably going to sub there, but I really have nothing to hit it with seeing as my stabs are both resisted by him. So I go into my Matang as he sets up a sub and then Swords Dances. So I'm really kind of nervous here because if he has X Scissor over Return instead of, you know, he probably has... What I'm thinking is he has Swords Dance, Substitute, Leaf Blade, and then either Return or x -Scissor. But if he just has Return and Leaf Blade, I probably am good to go. And that does confirm it there, as he does have the Leaf Blade. That does a lot more than I thought it would. Even at plus two from the Swords Dance, Matang with the Eviolite is really damn bulky. I missed the Meteor Mash, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter too much. But he's going to go for another Leaf Blade, and after this one I'm actually going to die. So I go for the Meteor Mash. Don't get an attack boost or anything, which I can't really be hoping for that at this point. So I'm just going to go for a bullet punch on the next turn to just get some more damage off from this Leafeon. Get as much damage as I can because, like I said, this thing is, poses a huge threat to my team. But at this range of health, I'm definitely confident that I can go in with my Kadabra and kill it off with the Psychic if he wants to stay in, seeing as I believe it has around 60 HP and 60 special defense for its base. I'm not sure in that ballpark. And I'm just going to go for that Psychic because I need to get rid of that, and if he wanted to just leave it in and kill it off, and that would have been a good thing, but he goes into his Credilly. Now, I'm running a Scarfed Kadabra solely because Scarfed Sock is so prominent in NU, and it definitely counters Sock very well, but... Um, yeah, that's for later in the battle with the Tricking shenanigans because I do run Trick on that, but I gotta go into Reggie Ice to scare this thing out, Credilly, I believe its name is. I go for the Ice Beam on the Alamomola switch in, and that does a very nice chunk, seeing as I am Life Orb and all in Alamomola, doesn't carry the best special defense around. So he's going to go for a Wish, probably not seeing Offensive Reggie Ice very often, and not knowing that I do in fact carry the Thunderbolt, so I'm going to be able to take his big Love Disc looking thing, clean out with that Thunderbolt, which is awesome because that thing walls me for days besides this Reggie Ice, so good to get that out of the way. And he goes now into this Leafeon, and I was really, really praying that I could live this Leaf Blade and kill him off with the Ice Beam, but I don't, in fact, live that Leaf Blade. I believe if he was running the standard Smogon set, which I believe is bold nature, I think I could have lived that 100% of the time, so he must be running Adamant or something, but that really sucks. I go into, gotta go into Kadabra, and this is actually where I do go for the trick, 
and get his throw on the switch in, giving it the choice scarf. So that's awesome because I actually can outspeed his throw even with the choice scarf, so I can just get rid of that thing. And that's a pretty big threat, just definitely just taken out right there. So you don't have to worry about that anymore, the bulk up shenanigans. So he's going to go into his stun fist, knowing that if he can go for the T-Bolt to take me out and he definitely sees that I want to keep that cadaver alive so it goes for the sludge wave which he thought he said in Skype at least he thought was going to be super effective against my Torterra but it isn't it was just you know normal damage and as I am ground and ground resist the poison and stuff like that so he's gonna switch out into his Leafeon now I knew he was gonna do that so I go for the Stone Edge Earthquake and Stone Edge are actually gonna be doing about the same see how much that does I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be able to be breaking his subs with the stone edge so that's good news for me because I gotta be breaking those subs if I want to have any chance against this thing and I'm not missing stone edge which is also a really really good thing so I'm kind of forcing his hand here he can't keep subbing because he's gonna eventually run out of HP he doesn't have his Alamomola to wish pass to this Leafeon or anything and he only has leftovers as his form of recovery so he does go for the swords dance on this turn and I get a little bit of luck here in going for the stone edge and getting the crit which is gonna be pretty big actually it doesn't come into play too much now that I think about it because on this next turn I thought that he would just want to keep his Leafeon alive and well because seeing it's a huge threat to my team so I decided to go for the earthquake kind of predicting a switch and get some stab damage off on something and thinking that it could all pretty much KO this Leafeon seeing how much stone edge was doing but it doesn't it leaves it just short of the kill and at this point I can't lose my Torterra because that stun fisk is a huge threat with the specs I never thought I'd say stun fisk is a huge threat but it is to my team so I gotta go into my war total and kinda just leave it in to die because war total doesn't serve a purpose at this point he's gonna go for the return just to change up moves I suppose but on the next turn he's easily gonna be able to kill me off with the leaf blade and then I'm gonna have to be uh, have to go back into my Kadabra to scare him out. So he does in fact kill me off with the Leaf Blade. I went for Rapid Spin in case something crazy happened and I would have got my the rocks away, but that doesn't happen. So I gotta go into Kadabra, and he's definitely not gonna want to stay in at this point. Although I believe I just go straight for a Psychic again because I am slowly wearing this Cordilly down. Although he probably has the recover, any damage is gonna be good. I don't really have much I can predict when this Cordilly Cordilly comes in. And I'm at this point thinking, I gotta go into Altaria and start setting up Dragon Dances, because I don't have anything to hit this Cordilli or Leafeon with at this point. And he misses the Toxic there, which, it seems like Hax is definitely going in my favor, but I'll point out why that Toxic miss really didn't matter later in the match. But I'm gonna go for the Dragon Dance here, get up to plus one, and now I'm thinking, I believe I count this as well, if I'm at plus two and he's running bold max defense Cordilli, which is pretty common, the Outrage at plus 2 won't quite be able to take it out. I believe it'll do 60% if I'm right. Maybe that was at plus 1. I can't remember. If I remember right, though, it will do 60%, which is not good. So I definitely got to at least get up to plus 2, and that way, you know, he won't be able to really recover stall me if I'm doing 60%. So I get up to plus 2. His Leafeon comes in, and he's just going to have to leave that thing in to die here, which is unfortunate for him, but... He doesn't really have much of a choice. He knows his Stun Fisk is a pretty huge threat, so he's trying to keep that alive. And since it is at full health, he's just going to, you know, leave it there. So i got to go for the Outrage at this point. No time here to really dink around and go for more Dragon Dances. So I do take out the Leafeon here. Now the thing is, he's going to go back into that Cordilli. And now this is where the fact that those Psychics weren't doing very much gave me, you know, some hope. Because I was thinking he was probably going to be carrying some special defensive EVs. He's definitely running max HP at this point. And the Outrage brings him all the way down and out. He takes out the Cordilli, which is awesome. So he, in fact, probably wasn't running much defensive EVs, if any. He was running a special defensive set. I get a two-turn Outrage, which does suck. But at this point, it's looking really good for me. I'm going to keep my Altaria alive. This is his last being Stun Fist. And go into Kadabra just to fodder it out, because I have Torterra, which I'm pretty sure can kill from full from full HP with the Earthquake and take him straight out, but just in case, I'm going to go into Kadabra. I thought he'd actually just kill me straight off, but my thought process was I could go into Kadabra, he'd kill me off, then I'd go into Altaria, fire, fire off an Earthquake, which I didn't want to risk getting hit in confusion there, so... The Sludge Wave actually doesn't kill me off, which was his only choice to go for, seeing as Thunderbolt would not affect Torterra, and then Earth Power wouldn't affect Altaria, so Sludge Wave is his best option. And I believe maybe the other thing he'd be carrying is Surf, but that wouldn't be able to do anything to Altaria either, so... Yeah, I go for the Earthquake there. Isn't quite going to take him out. And see how much that did, I was pretty confident that Torterra would have been able to take him out from full with the Earthquake. It would have been really close, so I'm kind of glad here I dinked around and made sure that when I do go into Torterra being my last poke, I will be able to actually take him out with the Earthquake here for the narrow 1-0 victory. So, 
That was a good game, Blake. If you guys did enjoy, feel free to go check out Blake's channel or my own channel. And yeah, thanks again for the nice comments and whatnot on my last upload here, making me a director. Much appreciated. And I will see you guys all next time. Bye-bye.